but I didn't think we'd make it through the night. Benjamin Jenny and his son, Benjamin Jenny Jr., or BJ, were at their family cabin in White Pine for a fun weekend snowmobiling around the Porcupine Mountains. For almost 15 years, the Jennies have made the trek from Albertville, Minnesota, to ride around the Silver City area, and their weekend started out as normal. It was just another weekend. Me and him were coming up riding. Uh, nobody else could come with us, so we were just going to go ride ourselves. Around 11 Sunday morning, the two left on their snowmobiles for Silver City when they decided to go off trail by Little Iron River. But around 1 in the afternoon, they found themselves in deep snow and deep trouble. And it was pretty nasty, lots of water, and we couldn't, we were trying to find a way out, and the banks were too high. Around 4.30, BJ sent a text to his uncle saying they were stuck, and they ditched their rides to follow the river on foot toward Lake Superior. That message was relayed to the Antonagan Sheriff's Department, Michigan State Police, and DNR, and the search began. They were doing things behind the scenes that, that people weren't seeing, um, such as trying, getting triangulation on the, the last known coordinates from a text message that had come in. Night swept over the Porkies and the Jennies only had a couple of granola bars, a bottle of water, and a dead cell phone. And temperatures were dropping to nearly minus 40 degrees. I was obviously scared, but I, I don't recall showing any emotion the whole time. It was definitely very scary, especially at night when you can't see very far. You know, you don't know what animals are out there. You're hearing trees and stuff cracking all the time. You don't really know what's out there. With soaked clothes and frozen feet, they walked the entire night to stay warm, only sleeping for a few minutes at a time. My fingers were so cold, so I balled them into the glove, and then the gloves froze so that I couldn't get my hands in, so my wrists were out. By daybreak, their spirits were lifted and they had a new burst of energy. They continued on Little Iron River for about five miles, and they estimate they walked for almost 22 hours straight. I knew if we made it through the night that we'd make it somehow. I just told them, you know, there's nobody here, it's just us. We're on our own, but we're going to make it out of here. Around 2.30 Monday afternoon, they finally found relief. We rounded a corner and there was the DNR and everything got better from there. When we came across them, uh, they were in relatively good condition. I, I would say better than we expected for being out there all night. They say looking back, they wish they had brought more food, water, a GPS, and something to make a fire with. Despite their horrific ordeal, they say they'll be back out on the trails again soon. It's not going to stop me from riding. Just hopefully riding a little smarter. Sarah Blakely, TV6 News, Ontonagon.